Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I've got something super exciting. I've got the new Wacom Cintiq 16. So this one was just announced at CES last week and I have one right here and I'm ready to crack open the box. So let's unbox this puppy. And it looks like it has two little drawers here. The first one pops open. Mmm, smells good. You know, am I a geek? I love the smell of fresh electronics. And this looks like the accessory bay in here. So let's have a look and see what we got. Whoa. All right. Ooh. Okay, so that's the back. And that's the front. Very sleek. And if we go on the back here, we've got fold out feet. So it's nice actually, let me just pull this up a little bit. But I also have another accessory with me here today, and this is the adjustable stand. So let's check this out. Now this adjustable stand gives you a lot more flexibility in the way that you use this antique. It enables you to kind of move it in different ways. Now the stand itself comes with rubber feet here. So you can just kind of pop these rubber feet on like that. Just very simple. And it protects the base and gives you a nice little rubber stand like that. So you can work with it more upright. So if I push this little uh, latch here, I can adjust the height of the Cintiq. So I can make it much higher like that. You know what, that feels nice and secure. Yeah, I'm able to work there, put some good pressure on there. And that does not appear to be a problem. And with the um, stand here, you can also change it and mount it so it goes this way. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can turn it around and have it in portrait mode or in landscape mode. Personally, I like to work in landscape mode. So we have a generously long power cable here. So the power actually just goes here into the power brick. Then the power brick connects to this three-way adapter. One of the adapters here gives us power. Okay, on the back here, this just pops open to reveal a port for this connector. Goes in through this little assembly there. Snaps in like that. And now I can plug this into my computer. Okay, so this is designed for your emerging professional, your student, your hobbyist, your enthusiast, the person that wants to have the full Wacom experience with the pen on the screen without having to spend a lot of money. So this comes in at only $650, which is quite incredible for a Cintiq. But let's talk about the specs. All right, so let's talk about the pen. The pen that comes with this is the Pro Pen 2. Now this is exactly the same pen that comes with the Cintiq Pro and also with the Intuos Pro. But there's something really special about this pen. It uses a technology called EMR, which is electromagnetic resonance, which is a technology that Wacom has been using in all of their tablets and Cintiqs for many, many years. So there's no cable, there's no battery to charge, and the pen feels really nice. It's nice and balanced because you don't have the weight of the battery in the back or somewhere kind of weighing it down, making it too heavy or off balance. The other thing is you never have to worry about charging it. So you can just jump in and start drawing whenever you want. You can use the same pen with this, you can use it with your Intuos tablet. And also your other pens, such as the R pen and the Grip pen, work on here as well. The pen supports a whopping 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now that's a lot of different levels of pressure sensitivity. And the reason there's so many is a lot of them are geared towards a very low pressure, which means that you can just barely shade things. And you'll see in a little bit when I use this, how that works. But I just love that because it gives me the feeling 
of using a pencil. And some of the imitation tablets that I've seen, when you do a light touch, what happens is the line just disappears, or sometimes you just get a dotted line um, because it's not able to register that light touch. Here, I can just let it sit on the tablet with its own weight, and it can actually start to register. So that's something that's really important. When we look at the tablet itself, we look at the screen. Uh, this is the Wacom Cintiq 16, which is a 15.6 inch diagonal to diagonal screen. It's in full HD, which is 1920 by 1080 resolution. The color is 72% of NTSC color values. It has a anti-reflective coating on the screen, so it's not actual etched screen like the Pro Series, but um, it doesn't feel like there's any coating on here. It works very well, it gives me a nice traction on the pen so it's not slippery. It feels like I'm painting with a pen or a pencil on paper, and I'm not really seeing any glare on this screen at all. So let's just quickly talk about the differences here between the Pro and the Cintiq, because how were they able to make a Cintiq for $650, um, you know, which is an actual Wacom brand, not some cheap knockoff? Um, I think it's pretty amazing. So the difference between these are the Pro has 4K resolution. This has a 1920 by 1080 resolution. This does not have any touch. Um, so the Pro has the multi-touch. And honestly, it's not a big deal because when I'm drawing this and using it as a tablet, I, I turn off the touch a lot of the time anyway because I don't want to accidentally bump my artwork. The other thing is the color gamut. So the Cintiq Pro has 94% of Adobe RGB color gamut, whereas this one is 72% of NTSC. So it still looks nice. Uh, the colors are good. Just is not giving you that full professional grade that you would get out of the Pro. One of the things I noticed was an absence of the pen holder that you would normally get with the Wacom Intuos line. And then I realized it's because it comes with this little sleeve here that can you just slip the pen in there right there and it will hold the pen. The other thing is what about the additional nibs? Well, if you pop this out, there's additional nibs right there that come inside this. And this is also reversible. So I can put it on the left side of the tablet or I can put it on the right side of the tablet and just pop my pen on there. So that's really handy. Now, one of the things you're looking for here is parallax. So I'm putting this here and I'm looking around because what happens is your cursor, if the glass is too thick, you get parallax where your cursor might look like it's perfectly lined up, but then when you move off to the side, you can start to see a distance between the pen tip and where you're drawing and that can make it difficult. On here, I'm looking at this. I'm not seeing any parallax going from corner to corner. So let's have a look at the drawing experience. One of the things I want to test out is the pen pressure. So if we click up here in the brushes, we can choose a brush. Then we're going to click the brush settings and we're going to look at the different settings. Now under the settings, there's two things I like to set. Shape Dynamics enables you to change the size of the pen. Now we can choose pen pressure or we can choose pen tilt. If we go under transfer, we can set the pen pressure to opacity. And this enables us to paint with a very light touch to a heavier touch. And it will change the density of our strokes. Now let's have a look at if we were using this for illustration work. Here's an illustration that I'm working on 100% in Photoshop. And if I wanted to just do a very, very light, light stroke here to kind of round out the shape of the tank here on this Harley that I'm building, I can do that just using a very, very light touch, almost just letting the weight of the pen just kind of carry that brush stroke. And hopefully I'll get to finish this at some time. And, uh, and when I do, I'll post it. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's have a look at retouching. Maybe one of the things you like to do is retouching. Uh, we're going to do some dodging and burning. I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to set it to 30% opacity. And I'm going to use pen pressure for the opacity. And I'm going to also set the tilt to the shape. So that way I can paint the larger areas by tilting the pen and do the fine detail by holding the pen more upright. And now I can do a little bit of dodging and burning here. I'm just dodging here using the edge of the pen to get these larger areas and just gently painting. Then I'm going to hold the pen up and I'm going to go for some of the more detailed areas. 
All right, this feels really good. I, I like the feel of this pen. It feels just as good as my Cintiq Pro as far as the painting experience here. All right, so we can just show you a quick before and after. And here's another layer where I've kind of finalized that. Now there's another thing I want to test on here. And I want to test how much lag there is. So why don't we choose a brush here. And then let's move across the screen quickly to see if there's any lag. I'm not noticing any lag here. So why don't I make the pen stroke thinner. And let's do it again. Absolutely no lag. This is great. Why don't we have a look at the, some of the settings. So if we go under our system preferences here, we can go to our Wacom tablet. And then if we want to calibrate our Cintiq, we just simply click on calibration and then click calibrate. Now we can set the corners here. We can click the back button on the pen to bring up our express keys and these can all be programmed. And this can be set for your system or you can do a program specific. Like if we want to go into Photoshop and set custom keyboards just for Photoshop, we can do that. So overall, what do I think about this tablet? So it might be lacking in some of the pro features that are inside the Cintiq Pros. But as far as, you know, for $650, this is definitely great value. Um, it's the build quality is excellent. Uh, the feel on there is really nice. It definitely gives you that Wacom experience. So if you don't have the budget for the Cintiq Pro and you want to get the Cintiq tablet and start using an actual real Wacom Cintiq uh, for $650, it definitely brings it within reach of a lot more people. Personally, I actually really enjoy this and I definitely would recommend if you don't have one, this is definitely worth looking into. Now, I just want to let you know this is not a sponsored video. I'm not paid by Wacom to do this review at all. I'm doing this for you guys. Um, overall, I don't really have anything I don't like about it. It's a nice feel. Um, the, as I said, the build quality is good. The drawing experience is good. There's no lag. There's very little parallax. The screen is bright enough for indoor use. Uh, outdoor, maybe not so much, but because it only works on EC power anyway, you probably are not going to be using this outdoors. Anyway, so I'd love to know your guys' thoughts about this. What do you think about this? Do you think this is good value for money? Do you think this is a good experience? Can you not wait to get one? Or do you already have one or you're using the Pro line? Let me know in the comments underneath. Also, let me know what kind of work are you doing? Are you doing more illustration work or are you doing more retouching work on your tablet? So anyway, if you like these kind of reviews and also Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now. I do a new tutorial every single Tuesday and then uh, throughout the week I also do other tutorials and tech reviews and different things like that. Hit that little notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. If you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.